he doesn't get that much assistance. You know, there's the original. It's so good. And I I'm obsessed with this cat in the song. <laughs> is meow. that is that song from cats though? No, no. No, it's, it's an original. It's, it's just a cat original. singing on its own. Cats, it's its own separate perverted universe. <laughs> Can we insert here the I go meow song? No, it's gonna be copyright yeah, copyright and then we'll get a strike, stricken. dude. What about the original? It, it'll copyright it with the original? I mean, we're dating the podcast enough with with re- references to memes as we find them. Yeah. Imagine the fan backlash when they're like, "Okay, so you don't put in quotes from the show, but you'll put in this fucking <laughs> yeah, cast song." You'll find all sorts of <laughs> fucking right, stupid right. ass <laughs> like, <laughs> priorities. Well, anyway, just anybody can Google the "I Go Meow" song. Most people and- in the world uh, love dogs, and they hate cats. No. Fact. Wow. Fact, dude. More people love dogs than than, than love well, cats. Well, let's Google that. Do Look more it up, dude. people love dogs I think dogs the internet cats. like gave way to all of the yeah. cat lovers. Yeah. It's the internet that made cats. It's the internet. Like, but also the Egyptians. I mean, the Egyptians were. But them. where are they now, dude? Let's not forget the Egyptians. Marvin, where are they now, dude? <laughs> They're yeah, still in they Egypt. Now? They're in Egypt. Oh, yeah. yeah, those guys. Those guys. Oh doing what do they have to do these days? Yeah, you know, dude. Same those for Egyptians. like Constance. Wait, not what is the... There's a one city in Turkey where it's just like... Istanbul? Yeah, I think it's Istanbul. They're just cats <laughs> everywhere. That one city? Yeah. Wait, you're not talking about Constantinople. Yeah, no, you're not talking no, about no. Uh, Simon and Gomorrah. <laughs> <laughs> Simon and Gomorrah. Yeah. Simon yeah. And Gomorrah, dude. Uh, guys uh, let me tell you what dude this episode has got me pumped dude oh good pumped oh, there's, oh, there's, there's a lot to I, go over i love this fucking episode dude dude this is why i was like i wanted to say last episode this is this two-parter is one of my favorites well, we, we, we can't like get all of uh, know. Into, I, I, like, I can't tell you yeah, anything about the second part. We can't gush all yeah, we yes, want yes, yet because yes, we're yes. not through part but two. There's a lot yeah, to dude. gush over in this what one are you episode. Saying, are you saying we, you know? we haven't done enough foreplay? I mean, no, not enough. Oh my God, no. dude. How much or, do you need, Rather, dude? all of the required foreplay has just occurred and the actual <laughs> stuff has yet to happen. Is well, let's point. let's start up the music then. Let's get in the mood. In the business time. If I could, I would license that song. Let's to like, play. let's talk to t- Tim Hartley. What's his name? <laughs> Tim Hartley. <laughs> What's his name? Like, I don't know. Like the composition of In the Mood is probably at this point In public mood. domain. We would probably need to just find a performer who is able. But we want to... the Glenn Miller version. <laughs> well, there's a few of those. I know. I mean, and I'm certain that you, you wouldn't require the original recordings to to get the point across. <laughs> In fact, the tempo at which we usually sing it is nothing like how it's originally done. <laughs> but the Glenn Miller one is like the most famous version. And well, yeah, yeah, know. like it was, it was yeah. them that made it yeah. popular and everything. But you know, yeah, and at this point, I'll bet that it's that that others could do it. Yeah, I wonder if like the songbook because Glenn in can't. The, mood, the, the sheets are like public Glenn's domain. dead, dude. Yeah, he's yeah. fucking dead. He's mill. He milled out. Yeah, he yep. he, he had a milf. <laughs> Is that what you said? Maybe. <laughs> he I milfed out. Yeah. He milfed out, dude. He had, he, yeah. he he was drowning in milfs and he died. Glenn Milfer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Milf <laughs> stood well, for, you know, man, I love yeah. flutes. <laughs> I mean, the reason he died is because he got syphilis. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I love fucking. Fact. Look it up on Memory Alpha. It'll is tell that you. true? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Syphilis. No. He yeah. got. I mean, that's how Al Capone died, too. Yeah, it's, uh, that's actually true. Did he have oh, yeah. syphilis or did he have a... Uh, it was... I, I remember because we syphilis. went to uh, Alcatraz. Had, he's like, my doctor told me I had syphilis. <laughs> that's what Al Capone died of, you know? Yeah. Thank God what? you got this treated. <laughs> Sarah and I took Sarah's dad to Alcatraz Island for, for Father's Day. And uh, that's... It's very we Father's like, Day thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then when we, we saw, like, oh, these are the famous prisoners that have been here. And Al Capone died from syphilis because he oh, was yeah. fucked up. And, uh, you know, but apparently in Alcatraz, they ate really well. Like they had like three meals a day and it was delicious. So nice. Yeah. They also, use, they, they invented Pilates over there in Alcatraz. Yeah. They invented are Pilates. You, really? And uh, why are we bullshitting right now? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm really gullible, so I will believe all this. I will tell the next person <laughs> I mean, did you know Pilates was invented did you know, in Alcatraz? Did you know Al Capone was actually one of the foremost purveyors of Pilates? And it, he invented it as a way to try to stem the tide of syphilis. Wow. But it just, you know, it was a little too little too late. But now, if you know yeah. you have syphilis, you do it early enough, Pilates will save you. Do the Pilates early, you. yes. Will save yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to start Pilates treatments early. Yeah. yeah. In fact, all those people you see in Pilates studios, they They're all, all have syphilis. <laughs> syphilis <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Just assume that when you walk in. Yeah. Like, as soon as you're over the age of 25, you should really think about preemptive Pilates. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, a really, it's the only vaccine. <laughs> it's preemptive Pilates. Yeah, the COVID fact. vaccine, that, was, that should not work. What you fact. needed to do was, was you, Pilates. You have, to, you have to say this. Allegedly fact. <laughs> uh... Chain People of command. believe it, dude. People were, were <laughs> drinking fucking bleach yeah, a few hydro years ago. Hydrochloroquine. Yeah. Chloro chloroquine. They're, they're, oh, yeah, they're, here's the thing, dude. <laughs> People were trying to bleach their buttholes and get rid of COVID at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, and they were yeah. trying to find whatever the yeah. heck Kofefe was. Yeah, <laughs> Kofefe. Kofefe. Yeah, I love Kofefe. Uh, I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the myth is that that's what um, that's what uh, what's his name? Uh, that's a Star Trek character, Kofefe. No, no, no. That's what. <laughs> what? His, that's what. Um, not Jim Belushi. What's the guy from SNL? He's in Ghostbusters. Uh, uh, um, f um, Bill Murray. Bill, Bill Murray. Bill, That's what Bill yeah. Murray told Scarlett Johansson at the end of uh, Lost in Translation. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kofi. <laughs> it's also what Charles Foster Kane actually said before he died. It wasn't Rosebud. Yeah, it was Kofi. Yeah, but then, all right, I'm sorry, I brought it up. It's a very old reference. We shouldn't Come be on, riffing Dan. on it now. <laughs> it's it's Come apropos on. to this episode. We watched Chain of Command Part yeah. One only. Off the chain, yes. but, but a lot goes on in Part One. Hell yeah, it's a lot going on. And also, Chain of Command first aired during during the Christmas month of December fourteenth, really? nineteen. Yeah, it took like a month uh, yeah. to air this episode from off the back of the last. They, one. they were very busy with Deep Space Nine. So a little bit behind the scenes, the crew is burning the candle at both ends. They are working on both Chain of Command or TNG and Deep Space Nine at the well, same time. Why don't time. they just hire a different crew? They do, the, the, but a lot of the but a lot of the creatives behind it oh beca God, al dude. also typical, because typical there was there was dude. meant to be a uh, more crossover than before like like between than there was between TOS and TNG so mm -hmm. they had to more closely work together and all that so can someone explain to me the motivation for Kofifi we don't know what it means Sarah <laughs> we don't know what Kofifi means yeah we don't know he, he tweeted it and we don't Wait, know if, what he if, means if you're about to ask a question about the episode <laughs> no 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 yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not what are you asking about what are you asking about damn can't even get my damn question out um <laughs> look why? if you get if you, if you take antibiotics <laughs> it'll get rid of the fucking syphilis dude I was joking with you earlier it's good to know good to know um yeah. why was Deep Deep Space Nine created? Like, why? Well, they had different. Amb so you'll know when you watch Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine is a very different type but like, of show. Like, why now? Like, why? Well, part of it is why? that they wanted to kind more of money. Just expand. Yeah, they wanted to expand the Star Trek on, universe. More, more money, you know, more like, problems. Like, it's kind of like what Marvel does. Why does Marvel make yeah, so dude. many different properties why and do, shows? Why, why is Star make, Wars yeah. making different movies and shows? Did they anticipate why that like, any property? Yeah. TNG was going to start to taper off and come to an end? And then we're going to yeah. just pick up? Why did they, they do? That, they what, did they, what did they do? A sequel to the Sting called the Sting Two that sucked ass. <laughs> Why did they do Chinatown Part Two? More money, dude. And, and part of it also was creative in the sense that, like, they wanted to do a very different type of storytelling. Um, yeah. where TNG is a lot closer to what they were doing with the original series and that it's very episodic. Each episode rarely ever mentions the other episodes. You know, it all tends to be yeah. very self enclosed. Like yeah, in a box. And Deep Space Nine is not that. And Deep Space Nine is also way more willing to talk about bigger, scarier topics than TNG was. So yeah, the real stuff, like syphilis. STDs. Yeah, <laughs> like what I are we think, talking about? I think so. Um, oh, there's yeah. also okay. stuff racism. about racism. Are we going to get to racism? Okay, finally. I'm sick of pretending it doesn't exist in this future. The commander of Deep Space Nine is uh, Benjamin Sisko, a black man, and uh, that plays he, into he, the fact he, that he's black plays the into the dude it, that, like, that wrote fucking the thong song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's the same joke you've made. Before. <laughs> 
Hell yeah, dude. I'm in, dude. That's all you gotta say, dude. Song Song is in effect. Don't worry. We'll, we'll hear that joke for the entire duration of yeah, our so, yeah, nine. so this is what I'm predicting. For the entire duration of Deep Space Nine, the two jokes yeah. that'll keep coming up is the Thong Song and the Kardashians. That's just gonna Qu- keep question, happening. Question, question. Over and do yeah. you think? Do you think they have the power? And he, look, pardon this question if you're easily offended. Uh, and fuck off, too. Um, but, uh, do you think, like, hypothetically, like, like, if the person manning the transporter was a little more nefarious, you know, uh-huh. they could they could beam in somebody uh, with no clothing. Like they took their clothes oh, yeah. off in transit. Oh, That's what the dude. Ferengi did. The Ferengi did that when they brought uh, Deanna and oh, uh, yeah, dude. Uh, Loxana on board their ship. They Those stripped their clothes perverts, off with, with the transport. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I, I forgot, forgot that, that they managed there that they had done that. Yeah. 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 You could do all sorts of things. Are there laws? Are there like laws no, against that? No. No, I mean, I mean, the Ferengi weren't following laws by kidnapping people Sarah, to begin with. Sarah, so. to finger bang is not a sin, dude. Come on. I guess not. Like they can do all sorts of things. Like one time, um, when Miles was bringing over data, a, a phaser God, was in the process of being fired. Yeah, he turned it that's off right. That's while right. it's being fired. Like the the transporter is basically a magical machine that can do anything. Maybe but they, maybe but they, they choose put in to Drake. Just... They're putting Drake and Kendrick, and then squash the beef in transit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it can do that. If you Hell if you transported yeah. Drake and Kendrick together, they could they could make them friends again. Yeah, it can they remove just, slurs from your vocabulary in transit. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude. and nice. they would they would just combine them into Drake Rick. Yeah, and the beef would be over. That sounds awful. Yeah. Okay. Lord <laughs> Lord Drake Rick. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> let me tell you, dude. As soon as this episode started, I was in. They should have said Ronnie Cox is in this. You should have said that. Oh. Like, hey, one day you don't want I'm me like to tell you six. anything. You don't know, want me but, to fucking tell you but, anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just don't want you to say that this is the best episode. That's all. Let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here. I I want to say this b- before anything. I just watched like a three part documentary series on uh, RoboCop that's streaming mm-hmm. on Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. and Ronnie Cox was uh, in in uh, a lot of it. What part did he play in RoboCop? He's a CEO. He's CEO of uh, OCP. Yeah. Remember? Okay. 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 He's, he has the best line in the sequel where he goes, uh, Johnson or whatever. He goes, this is going to look bad for the press. Uh, let's, let's get ahead of this like, while the city's like on fire. Uh, <laughs> spoiler yeah. alert. He's not in the sequel. He yeah, dies. He oh, that's, he's in the sequel. No, he dies in the first one, dude. Well, you're thinking, no, of, the, you're thinking of, of the other CEO that takes over. No, no, no. The, the older the, dude. Dude, dude is, you don't is, want to question Ronnie, me on this. Is Ronnie Cox the he's competitive the guy, he's, guy? He's the guy that 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 grabs- uh, Oh, he's not the CEO. He's one of the executives. He's he not the, the CEO the CEO. The bathroom, remember? He's the yeah, guy. yeah. He's not the CEO CEO. He's one of the, like, he's like the VP or something that's yeah. co- in competition with the young guy. That's what it yeah. was. Yes. I For some reason, my mind went straight to CEO CEO. Because like you're the, perverted, the, dude. <laughs> can't take you anywhere, dude. Well, this episode, Chain of Command Part 1, first aired on December 14th of 1992. Dan, let's do it. Let's go around the sun. All right. So, um, like I said, it's been a month since the last airing of an episode. So, notable movies that came out in the meantime. We got Malcolm X. We have Home Alone 2 by the end of November. Mm, we also yeah, have yeah. The Bodyguard, which is when everyone started singing I Will Always Love You mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. Which is time. Which is a Dolly Parton song. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It was a cover of a Dolly Parton song by Whitney Houston. Also that came out was A Few Good Men and A Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, A Few Good Men came out near Christmas time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So quite a few notable movies. Um, uh, In the video well, game which, sector. Which Muppet movie? What? Christmas. Muppet Christmas. Christmas. Christmas Carol? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. worst one. The good one. It's the, it's the no, best version of a suck, Christmas dude. Carol. Trick question. Yeah, like, why suck. do you even care? Like you hate the ball. <laughs> I don't even know at what shitty point of the Muppets movie we were in. <laughs> one all of the right, best right. ones. <laughs> in video games, you have Sonic the Hedgehog 2 that released on Genesis, yeah. which introduced Tails, just like the movies. How about that? Yeah. Hey, well. um, on November 17th, around this era. Oh, actually, I found a pretty good news bit. Oh. Um, around this era, Chevy pickup trucks were being accused of being unsafe because they're side settle fuel tanks could leak gasoline and start a fire more easily. And there were several reports of fiery collisions. This led NBC's Dateline news program to air a segment demonstrating their own attempt to recreate the explosion, where they did get some spectacular footage of a sedan T-boning a pickup and exploding into flames. Oh, There's one problem though. It later turned out that the fire explosion was rigged with incendiary devices to force <laughs> the result, which led to rounds of investigation from other journalists, defamation lawsuits from General Motors. Eventually they read an apology on air next year. 
So basically, (laughs) NBC Dateline was the original Mythbusters, dude. (laughs) They set out to recreate a reported phenomenon or result. And then when they couldn't do it, they just cheated for the cameras. The only thing is that they didn't forget. They just forgot to tell people. Yeah, that's well, I was about to say the Mythbusters wouldn't just lie. (laughs) (laughs) They would say we couldn't recreate the results. So because we just like to end things in explosions, we're just going to blow it up because we're frustrated. The method was exactly the same. (laughs) (laughs) It's just how it was was communicated. Well, That's all. Well, what happened? I like I like when they were like so like for the the, the famous um, concrete concrete truck one where they're like oh we can clear out a concrete truck that's been fucked up by just setting off a piece of dynamite. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, that's not working. Ah, let's just put every piece of dynamite we have in there. And it exploded so loud that they felt the explosion like three miles away. Oh, it was a famous <laughs> piece of footage that they kept on reusing every time. I could even hear the explosion in my head. It the went like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, it had like a weird like farting noise in it. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's like the scream that they keep using in movies. Ah! The Wilhelm uh, explosion. Yeah. <laughs> It sounded a little more like Dean Kane to me. <laughs> Dean Dean Kane's ah! scream actually was the Wilhelm scream. Yeah, it is actually <laughs> Dean Kane's scream now. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, the, the very last thing on December 11th, then President George H. W. Bush awarded Audrey Hepburn the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her work oh. as a humanitarian. Oh, that's nice. So that's being in that racist fucking movie. Um, which one? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, outrageous! Yeah, that definitely need a medal for that. Especially Mickey Rooney. He definitely yeah. deserved a medal for that performance. <laughs> <laughs> now, now when I look at that performance, it's just funny. Like, it's just so funny how this is like it's like a, almost like a parody of how to be a racist. <laughs> It's kind of amazing. Yeah, the, everyone loved it. <laughs> yeah. That's why everyone watched Breakfast at Tiffany's. They wanted to it's see great. a race. <laughs> Thus concludes our trip around the sun. Well, thank you very much, Dan. And you know what? We should also thank our sponsors, including Exter, who's having their Father's Day sale. And also, you know you about you know about their wallets and shit, but we did get the grid duffel backpack. Hell yeah. And it's been handed off to mm-hmm. Ricardo. I don't know yeah. if you had a chance to to kick the tire. it up? Yeah, well, like no, nah, dude. Yeah, I haven't grinded on that shit. Okay, you haven't you haven't a chance. I'm, chance I have a trip coming up. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna be a beautiful trip. I'm gonna try to take some pictures, dude. Oh, no nudes. I know you guys want some nudes, <laughs> but nah, nah. <laughs> uh, that's Dan's department for the OnlyFans. <laughs> Only I don't want to step though. on I his toes. I guarantee you, I am meeting all the demand. <laughs> yeah, yeah Dan, follow follow Dan um, on OnlyFans at um, <laughs> Dan Dank. <laughs> If that if that account actually exists, <laughs> we're we're sorry, whoever that is. Or yeah. maybe no, we just gave no. him a spike in like yeah, money. Yeah, we gave him so. a little spike in in, in yeah. followers, dude. Yeah. But what well, if it turns out to be someone who looks reasonably like me, but is into some really weird shit? Uh, what kind fine. of weird shit though? Mm, is is it consensual? Weird, yeah. yeah. Only fans. It's got to be consensual. And you got to have stuff like signed, like releases. So. Oh yeah. I don't know, dude. I think it's gonna be okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> then I'm good. I'm good. What, what was I? What was maybe I it'll be feet pics. Extra. Uh, no, extra. no, I hate feet. If anybody <laughs> knows me, you know that I fucking hate feet. Ooh. Yeah, me too. I don't like feet. You wear shoes in the house, Ricardo. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. it's, it's sick, dude. I'm not, that, <laughs> I'm not that far, but, you know, I'm just not. A fan. Well, you were talking then about. You're a the... foot lover then. Foot <laughs> lover. There's no in between. Yeah. You were talking about the grid duffel backpack. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Right. Feet to Esker. duffel pack. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's spacious. How do you right? say it? Exter. There's a T. Exter. Yeah. Exter. Uh, yeah, I got the grid. It looks beautiful on the outside. I'll tell you that right now. The my only concern is, and I haven't looked this up. I'm just mm-hmm. going on visuals. Mm-hmm. Is if if it counts as a as a carry on, which I think it right. does. Right, I think I think as a, it should count as a carry on. It won't count yeah. as a personal. Carry-on? item. It won't count as a personal item, even though it's like a backpack. Well, I think the grid regular backpack definitely yeah. would, but I don't think this is pretty big. This is like a duffel bag. Yeah, it's the size of like a, a luggage, like a carry on yeah. luggage. So I yeah. think it would count. Mm, it's as smaller a, than that. It's like an no? in between. It's like in between a carry on. No. I'd say once oh fully God. filled, it's like pretty close. Oh, yeah, it smells funny in my house, and I can't pinpoint it. <laughs> but you know what? You know what doesn't smell? Ex- yeah. Exker, Exker, <laughs> whatever their <laughs> company's called. Uh, they have beautiful wallets, and some are leather. They smell good. Some of them are made out of carbon fiber. Yeah. You know what's back? The gold wallets are back. Some of them what? are made really? out of gold. I yeah. want we one so bad. We just missed one. the window to get a free one. So. Damn it. 
We fucked up. It would have been really, it would have been pretty neat to just yeah. have a gold wallet that we never use. Yeah. <laughs> we would probably get that just, for your father for Father's Day. Yeah, Father's Day is coming. Unless up. he doesn't like gold, then get, don't get him that. Yeah, Unless you don't hate get him your that. dad, then yeah. do yeah, get get him that. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a real back and forth. Spite him with gold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, check you out what. the website. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot extra. of good stuff. Yeah, there they have now. like key cases. They have. You have tech bags, weekend bags, backpacks. It's more than just. It's like Burlington's coat factory. It's more than just great wallets. You know. So it's a. They don't just, have coats though. We should say that they don't have. Coats. They don't have coats though. Yeah. So you could head on over. Maybe to, soon. We don't know. I, actually, you could, they could s- slowly start getting the clothing. I can Dude, see the outerwear. If they, if they made an that. EDC jacket. That'd be mm. well, like yeah. like pockets everywhere. A lot stuff. of pockets, dude. Yeah, yeah. How many things are you guys carrying, <laughs> Sarah? Well, you don't need you, ladies' pants. Don't even have fucking pockets, dude. Yeah. You don't need because yeah. you guys are like twenty years behind well, in pocket yeah. technology. Like, we need to <laughs> we need to balance out like gender preferences acro- for like clothing pockets. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think as as I as I get older, I like to have only one thing per pocket. So I don't like to put my oh, keys like and that, wallet I like in the same that, pocket. I like to just have just a wallet in one pocket, just a phone in the other, just the keys in my jacket pocket, and maybe just my like ear earbuds case in the other pocket. Let me you know? tell you, dude. I think I naturally kind of do that myself. Yeah. Let me tell I don't you, want this. The mix. if mix I had them. a little more cash uh-huh. in my pocket, you know, uh-huh. to just hand out every time I go to a restaurant, I'd be like every single food item in a different fucking plate, please. <laughs> now I'll, I'll pay extra. Really? Oh. Yeah, I don't like. I don't. I, I, it, you don't like your the thing that's always. Ugh. What about Thanksgiving? Do you, do you want separate, them separate plates, my man? Separate oh, plates. Really? All right. All right, all right. I would prefer that's that. That's so fascinating. So you don't no, like the touching? I like the ones. Like, I like the ones. I like the ones that are divided. The, yeah, a little divided. The, yeah, the a lot of people don't like food touching, and that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know? I kind of like mixing and matching things, flavors. What are those yeah. things called? Um, it's like you get Japanese food in them, and they're little, oh, like the bento, bento boxes. Box. Yeah, we should get. We, I should get one of those. Yeah, so they're like, hard to wash. You can't throw them in the washer. You know, you can, no, you can. Bento boxes are definitely can, dishwasher you? safe. Yeah, a lot of them are. Some of them. Yeah. I'm gonna put that on my uh, Christmas list then. You go to Daiso. Daiso has a lot of dishwasher safe. Daiso, bento box. dice yeah. me, dice you, yeah. dude. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? We'll get back to the walls, dude. Uh, well, they should, you can they head should on make a jacket. Jacket with a lot of pockets everywhere. Please. Maybe they did. They, they, I just I feel, don't understand what everyone's carrying so much of. Like, I, 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 well, well, I guess every, I have a purse. I have a yeah, purse. Yeah, imagine everything in your mind. purse, yeah. but in pockets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And easy to, like, like, you're like, oh, where are my keys? Boom. You They're could right just here. wear a purse. It sounds like you're Some asking men for do. a purse. Some, Some men, men do. do. Yeah. yeah. A purse. My dad does. My dad has a man purse. A purse. So. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. Gucci. Yeah. Or if you're if you're comfortable with yourself, it's just a purse. He doesn't have to call it a man purse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's called a backpack. I it's a European carry-all. men's carry all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the term. The, the men's carry all. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the other the other pivot has been the messenger bag. Messenger yes. bag. See, those yes. are too big. Those are too big. That's too, too big. big, though. I, yeah. I mean, I did messenger bag when I was in college because, like, I'm holding books and my laptop. So you see, know. okay, I'm like I'm like shoulders bag, away. You know. I'm five years away term. from just wearing a fanny pack, dude, and just being a fan. Oh, you're going full dad mode. Yeah, I've done fanny it. pack mode at like conventions, and it's Me a too. revelation, man. Me too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a great place to hold your money because you have to put money out dude. all the time. Put my dude. chapstick like, in there, yeah. my headphones, yeah. my yeah. wallet, my keys. Nice, yeah, helpful, dude. I'm into the whole purse thing. If it was more socially accepted and people weren't laughing, <laughs> I love that. Dad. I love yeah. that so um, much. But like, but like with spikes or skulls on it, you know, really, <laughs> really, you know, what I mean? you want really gun, guns and knives all over it. Yeah. I want it to be nice and That's just a goth male. purse. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> goth purse. Yeah. You, you, so Ricardo, what Ricardo really is, is he's a goth. Uh, or, or like yeah. a biker Well, to be purse. honest, it's funny because I was talking, I forgot, to, this was a, a couple months ago. And well, this, a couple years ago, someone gave me a white shirt, like mm-hmm. a, a graphic tee, and I put it on. And my sister in law saw me immediately goes, Never wear, never wear white, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, You're right, you're right. And then I realized I never wear, I wear white like, constantly. Colors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. My I home shirt like is always a white shirt. Yeah. Anyway, get your wallets for dad. It's coming up. And so by the time this Order airs, now. you're Order really now. close, dude. ASAP. You're cutting it close. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Mother's Day is over. Father's Day is it's, now on the table. 
it's it is father's now time, time to now. talk about father's time. <laughs> yeah, dude. And that includes well, wallets. Yeah. Or, or one of you those. know what? Someone brought up a good point. I forgot where I was reading this, but someone brought up a good point. Sometimes women just want a little wallet too. So yeah, not all women want true. a big wallet too, you know? So and actually maybe, this design in particular is very easy to introduce to like a purse or something. If you yeah, just want it's, a, it's, a place it's gender to neutral, store guys. cards, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you guys are looking at stuff like that, head on over to extra.com. That's E-K-S-T-E-R.com. And you can use our offer code newbie, N-E-W-B-I-E. And during Father's Day sale, you should have up to at least a 40% discount across the entire store. That should be across everything. So again, you can head on over to extra.com. That's E-K-S-T-E-R.com. Use our offer code newbie and get up to 40% off. And I think, uh, or at least 40% off, I think. And the YouTube is a QR code too. So if you're watching it on TV for some reason, uh, you, just, you just scan your QR code. Bam, there you go. Do that. And same for our next sponsor, ExpressVPN. If you're on the YouTube version, there should be a QR code up now too. And you Whoa. know, damn, we're you living in, in the in the future already, dude. Wow, look yeah. at that thing. Look at that, look at that QR. Yeah, this, this cur code. Beautiful. Look at that. Big old <laughs> thick and frothy. Yeah, wish um, I could read that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, maybe you want to safely scan that QR code while you're connected to a VPN. Yeah. Not that like VPNs will protect you from everything. They won't. However. A VPN is a good part of your internet safety toolkit because a lot of VPNs like ExpressVPN does have built-in spyware, malware protection, uh, has ad blockers built in. It's got all sorts of stuff going on. And it's super fast, like the name suggests, and it's super secure. Not only are they the most highly audited, tested VPN mm-hmm. in the industry right now, they've also had lots of real world, real life tests where governments have tried to probe into them, subpoenaed them, even raided them. And you know what? Not a damn thing was found because when they say they run everything on RAM, when they say they don't have any connection logs or activity logs, they truly do not. They have stood the test of time when other VPNs have broken down and done weird stuff with the government or had data leaks and didn't tell their customers for months. I'm looking at you, NordVPN. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, ExpressVPN has mm-hmm. never done anything like that. They've had a good track record, knock on wood. So that we far. know, dude. Yeah. Here's so. the thing is that like, it's not 100% safe. One, no, no VPN two, is 100% safe. Two, yes. and this is just just like real talk. Two, the truth is, is that when it comes down to it, all the VPNs that are out there that every fucking podcast is fucking shilling for, they're all owned by two like big corporate entities. So I, I looked into that more. So it's like owned in the same way that like maybe it's like a, it's more of like a conglomeration. So yeah. because, for example, uh, Cape Technologies, which owns, I think, 15 VPNs, including ExpressVPN. Mm-hmm. They're incorporated, I think, in America, but ExpressVPN themselves are a British Virgin Island company. And as a result, they follow the laws of British Virgin Island, not of their conglomerate. Mm-hmm. So, and, and as a result, they also don't share any information between the different companies. In fact, when they have to share like new security findings they found, they actually mm-hmm. set up a conference in order to talk to the other VPN companies because technically they operate independently. Mm-hmm. So they actually can't really talk to each other. What the conglomerate really does is just collect profits <laughs> from Got the it. from the VPNs. And they don't offer really any Too guidance. Many profits. Because for legal reasons, they really can't. They're, it's out yeah. of their jurisdiction. Uh, and some other things. I don't, I don't know if it's entirely because of legal reasons or if it's also because of corporate structuring and whatever. So, But, I mean, that is to say, there is no truly 100%, 100% safe VPN. Much like there is no 100% safe internet security protocol in general. There's nothing in life is 100%. That's exactly safe. what I mean. Yes. And you know, condoms, not 100% yeah. safe. Condoms Birth are not control hu- pills, not 100% safe. Even if you get um, a you know, vasectomy, it is not, not 100%, 100% safe. It is not 100% but you safe. You got to you got to take precautions. It doesn't mean you don't wear the condom. It doesn't mean you don't take the pill or whatever. Exactly. Absolutely. You still have to be proactive and take care of yourself. Yeah. That's that's a very good analogy. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. and is you know what? You you want you want to protect yourself, head on over to expressvpn.com slash the digital start. condom of the world. Yeah. Boy, 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 boy. It kind of is like the condom for the internet in some ways. I mean, we're right back to raw dogging the internet again. <laughs> yeah. Like that's all we ever said in the in the beginning. <laughs> it's true. It's it's a tale as old as time. Yep, literally yes. as old as time. Beauty and the beast. As old as time people have been fucking and yeah. Using something to cover their penis. To yeah, sometimes it was probably leaves in black sails. We saw they just kind of rinse out 
You know, yeah. Little, little rinse, rinse. They just use a little, little, little irrigation a little, system. A little syringe to go. Yeah. That's little, it. You know, and I was like, I don't know if that's really uh, no, really not, effective. No, that's not working. Sometimes um, that's all you need. Little rinse, little rinse and. I don't know yeah. if that's working, rinse man. Rinse and go. But, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But you know what has proven to work? Heading on over to expressvpn.com slash new we'll start trek. Again, again, it doesn't work all the time. And if you sign up for 12 months, they'll give you three months for free. And yeah. uh 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not sure, you can always try it out. And if you don't like it, you can just get your money back. So again, that's expressvpn.com slash newbie star trek. And if you get done. 12 months, you'll get three months for free. You know, I've said that I've I said that term expressvpn.com slash newbie star trek so many times that it's like I'm I'm not sure if I'm saying the correct thing anymore. Like it's lost all meaning, you know? Like it doesn't like connect right to like what I'm I'm I hope that's the correct URL. <laughs> You're making me freak out over whether I heard it correctly. Or <laughs> I know it's like it's been said so many times that uh it, it sort of is Yeah, and I just let it like, you know, float right through my, my head. My brain just does it. Now I don't know as what if, I heard is as correct. As if like to grab a cup of water and drink it, you know? Like it's not thinking. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what Denise thinks about it. Ricardo, could you please tell us what happened in this episode? For show, for show. First thing uh, that happens is they're meeting up. Uh, they got they got some business with the Kardashians, right? Mm -hmm. These fools. The first thing that happens is an admiral shows up. It's like the fastest cold open they've ever yeah, had. I love it, dude. <laughs> the admiral shows up and he says, hey, Picard. And he's like, what's up? And he's like, dude, you're relieved of your command. And I think- She is. Yeah, sorry, she is. And I think, finally, thinking <laughs> finally, somebody is going to answer for the goddamn war crimes, dude. And all yeah, the fucking that was failures. my first thought, too. Yeah. My first thought so is excited. like, they have caught on to him. Yeah. Yeah. He has yeah. not been following. They finally, it's like they finally read the reports like years later. Like they caught yeah. up and they're like, oh shit. He's yeah. been like, going These reports wild. have been piling up. We just yeah. never looked. Yeah. They're like, they're like, they got a fucking Android on their fucking thing and he fucks people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, we well, can't let this they go let, on. They let the robot fuck their security chief? What the yeah. hell's going yeah. on here? Yeah. <laughs> and like, like, they, they haven't even caught up to where like so many horrible things that have happened on this fucking enterprise. Like I never actually thought it was was a serious threat that that was that that was why they were relieving him of command even though those are all legitimate reasons why <laughs> i so and the first thing she does is, is she's like because picard's like what's up baby uh when the <laughs> admiral shows up and, and and she's like there's no fucking time i'm not talking to you we there's have no, no time, time to, to say hi dude you're fucking out dude you're out uh the dude from robocop is in dude and he's like what the fuck and you later find out that picard they're putting him in a Delta Force mission, dude. Ninja <laughs> style. He's in to wear fucking ninja yeah. gear. With and he's Worf in to go undercover. And Worf and Beverly. <laughs> yeah. Beverly. Which is Yeah, well, I, I Beverly makes so much fucking sense. <laughs> she's a she's a she's she's death incarnate, dude. She has their highest kill count. Yeah, I guess, they call so. her the full metal bitch, dude. <laughs> uh, behind her back. Um <laughs> and so they they're gonna go on a mission. That's why uh, he's she's relieving of uh, relieving him of command. Yeah. And they bring in this dude. I don't even know his his name is uh Jellico Mangellan or something like that. Uh, so Mangellan's like, hey, and he Mangellan. I love Mangellan, dude. Yeah, because these guys are too lax, dude. I and love Jellico. Jellico's great. <laughs> Jellico, cat, yeah. So Jellico comes in and he's I'm gonna call him Jelly just for short. Yeah, so I'm gonna forget Jelly. Jelly. Th that's what his friends Jelly. call him. They call yeah. him Jelly. Yeah. So Jelly comes in. And he immediately he's like, look, this is what I want done, dude. I want it stat, dude. And he's like, he's like, you bring me, you you make four shifts. You know what I mean? I four like the idea shifts. of four shifts. You know why? Because if it's three shifts, it's an even doing, number. They're work. Well, they're also working eight hour days, right? Yeah. Who well, wouldn't we know. want? Who wouldn't want to just how work? Days work? No, that, so they run on a twenty four hour cycle, like okay. Earth. So who wouldn't want to just work a six hour day instead, right? Yeah, I mean, that sounds way great. better. You yeah. know. I mean, that's what do we, we all... how do you guys feel about him just getting in there and, love and barking love it, at everybody? Love you're it. you're okay with it this? It reminded management me too style. much of actual things that have happened at workplaces. <laughs> yeah, that, no, it's very know, yeah. Yeah, it was it was ups it was upsetting for me. Mm -hmm. I think Here's the thing: he's not showing up to the fucking local Walmart and making these demands of his workers, dude. Right. This guy, this is a military <laughs> fucking operation, dude. And yeah. these guys, if they're not ready to fucking to adjust, dude, then get the fuck out of here, dude. So, mm -hmm. so this is this is mm -hmm. so we're skipping slightly ahead. But the the feeling I got 
was that Jellico actually is a, a very sensitive guy. It's just that I have to get the ship in tip top shape for what could be war with the Cardassians yeah. really quickly. Imminently. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, he, he's like, the Cardassians are succubus. succubus. Like, like he t- when he has a talk with Deanna, yeah. you know, he's like, actually, Deanna, I agree with you. This is true. Yeah. I just don't have time. Yeah. And so we just, I, and, but and I because, believe him. He, he He's yeah. genuine there. I, I think he's not fucking, he's not blowing smoke up her ass. So for me, I'm like Dan. I feel like, okay, this guy comes in here and barks orders. A little weird. The management style is a little strange. Like, who are you? But then where he kind of gets me is that, oh, he knows what he's talking about. And yeah, that's yeah. where the respect comes from, where I'm like, okay, I'm going to trust him because he has proven to be the expert. He knows what he's saying. He's telling me to do this for this reason, like everything. And then that is shown to me by Data reinforcing his plan ideas. Data's like, actually, yeah, that is possible. Like, mm-hmm. we can totally do that. Like, that makes sense. And mm-hmm. that's reinforcing that this guy is not just anybody. He is. Yeah. He's making informed decisions in a very like stressful environment. Oh well, yeah, as soon as you introduce the, like the actual threat of like military, you know, the threat of war, which is real. Mm-hmm. Um everything that Jellico does makes total sense. It's just yeah. that the the show itself has never really treated threats yes. this way before, and that's why I guess it's so jarring to mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. because the whole time Picard and his lackadaisical style has his, somehow his worked ship. the whole time, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> it always works. So yeah. what the hell? Why do we need this level of of like you know being on top of shit? He it works, but how many times do they just get lucky? How many times <laughs> do they just get lucky? That's a good point. Well, that's Here's that's the, the benefit of being a show, he, but. He Here's the thing is that like, I like that there's finally like actual like things to at, at, at risk that he's like, we well, yeah, can't- the urgency in the episode starts yeah. off fast. Everyone yeah. suddenly like, this is actually a really big deal. This is bigger than anything we've done before so far, actually. So we need yeah. to like actually pay attention. And I, and I like, I really like the way Jellico Jellico is almost written exact opposite of Picard. Yeah. Like, like he's not po- like his posture is all over the hair. place. <laughs> yeah. It, like, it's, like he's always like moving his arms. He doesn't want pop- fucking fish in his room. Yeah. He yeah, does. So the like, fish, that that's funny. Fish out of my so the room. fish in his room, actually, <laughs> there's a lot of things that Jellico does in the show is actually the crew acquiescing to certain demands of the actors. So one of them is that this is a famous part where Jellico goes, I, pr- I prefer a certain level of professionalism mm. on the bridge. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. he makes uh, Deanna wear the uniform. Which that comment. Um, it did make me uncomfortable. Yeah. And him bringing it up like that, like that's the only place where I, I don't know if that maybe in part two that gets addressed later, but um, I was not okay with him. What are you talking about? Saying that. I, I, Why? I, I think it's fine. I don't by, think by him being to... pro- him being like, hey, this is a military fucking outfit, not fucking giant rockets. Wear a fucking uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine what she's wearing. I don't have a yeah, problem but, with but, it. Yeah, but but here's like, the thing: think... like they're not running a fucking Walmart, Sarah. They're running a fucking military ship. They're going to war. There is there is an argument to be like, hey, why do you get to dress differently? Yeah. from everyone else. When yeah. everyone why, else, why don't we all wear shorts to fucking work? Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I so why I not, get that. Though? I, I get I mean, that. That's true. That's Where were you want? I mean, I loved when, like, I think of like middle school when uh, they got rid of uniforms and it, or high school, and they're just like, you know what, everybody, just wear what you want. Like, yeah, but fuck but it. you're talking about fucking school, Sarah. Yeah. You're not. <laughs> imagine if the army, the, the you went to the fucking <laughs> army barracks, and you're like, this fucking guy's wearing fucking cargo fucking shorts, and they're like, dude, fucking wear the uniform, dickhead. But then why is she? Why is she even allowed to? Then why is she even on the fucking ship, place, dude? Kick her the know? fuck out. Like that's that's my. Whole thing is like i just didn't think it was necessary like She's in that also moment useless. it's just not necessary the in context of the show is because picard is yeah. more lax that's why but the real yeah. behind the scenes reason is that you marina Sirtis, cleavage <laughs> no marina Sirtis yeah. oh. has really wanted to wear like an actual uniform for nice. seasons she was like can i just wear a uniform isn't it weird that i don't and was this right. was this was them being like, yes, here's a uniform. And this is awesome. supposed to be a test. They could have done it in a totally different way where they didn't make Jelly sound like an asshole. But wait, what but why does he sound like an asshole? Why does he sound like an asshole? But they are also trying to make him seem abrasive. Like, I just he, don't think yeah, it's, they are trying I mean, to make him seem if abrasive. We're in the time of war and we're like urgently dealing with things that I'm not gonna be thinking about like what you're wearing. Yeah, exactly. Like. like by the same token, it's like if you're worried about really huge yeah. things like that, like why care about things like fish? Why 
I care about things like what people are wearing. I, well, I heard, I, here's a here's the wearing uh, of the uniform part. Say there's mass casualties and you have to evacuate the ship. You it. it do I? I don't have time to look to see. Oh, that person's not wearing clothes like the uniform. But is she part of the crew or is she part of the civilians on board that we should we should save? Boom! You wearing a uniform? Boom! Help someone that's not wearing a uniform. Done. Like like that's the the urgency yeah. of it. And the, the thing I is mean, that like that makes and sense. in times of war they are actually pretty strict about. Yeah. So no, uniform. but why not yeah. like say that instead instead of be like, hey. Well, I know. think they are well, making him abrasive. He, he just yeah. told her. Well, but, I don't know. but but I don't understand it's how why great. it's so abrasive. He literally just said, "I prefer to, if for everything to be formal." So just wear. A I mean, uniform. I guess it makes sense because this is the military. I mean, yeah. if he said this at like you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of yeah, whatever it, job, it's like, like a it's random like, job. Yeah, it's not like, like an okay, office job. Dick. It's yeah. it's like become yeah. it's a it's become a military job. So I get you're, it. I mean, it just not, it just for me it like yeah. it like just like triggered me. Like not triggered me, but I'm just like ugh. ugh well, it, well, ugh, I think part ugh. of it is that yes, we the Enterprise has been presented as basically like a floating cruise ship for yeah, many dude. seasons. Everybody so. Yeah, and that's Everybody? the thing. It's it's. I feel like Harp even ladies. on this podcast, we have been wildly inconsistent in how we regard the Enterprise crew and yeah. how it functions as a workplace versus whether it's a military, because mm-hmm. that's how it or it changes club, from episode to episode how yeah, they yeah. choose to present the context. Yeah. And so, in this particular context, they are leaning very heavily into the military aspect of it. And when you take yeah. it as military operations, everything he does, he's doing makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Just, it in makes the context of sense. other episodes where, in, like, you know, there was more leeway for things, like, all of this is abrasive. Like and yeah. it's and it's written that way on purpose. It makes perfect sense, and you wonder why it wasn't done this way in the first place. And you're like, yeah. oh shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is more like, oh yeah, this is how things should have been the whole time, huh? Like <laughs> it, that's kind of what this is about. A lot of it is that way. And the, the other thing is, you mentioned the fish tank. So the fish tank is also they're using Jellico to uh, fulfill a cast member's wish, which is. Patrick Stewart did not like the idea of having the fish in his ready room because he thought in this enlightened future where we give every living thing its own like way to live, why am I holding a fish captive in my office? He think he thought that was really odd. So the act of removing the fish, the lionfish, was actually I love it. Patrick Stewart's like suggestion. I love it. It, so, it's weird though that like even though it was the cast member who wanted it, they have to introduce a contradictory external <laughs> character to enact it upon the show because when the it disappears from the show, then you're left thinking like Picard doesn't miss his fish. He doesn't well, want his fish back. I can't yeah. say anything. Um, but both Deanna's costume change and the removal of the fish, they are both experiments according to the people who are developing the show. So they could be the way that way going forward. They might not. So uh, why did the audience get like, honestly, to me, if Deanna showed up in the next episode with like bleach ball, oh, that would have been a huge deal for fans. Like, I would have been like, all right, <laughs> like, it's not a big deal. Like, this is not supposed to be a show where everything we see is their lives 24 seven. Like we assume that we're tuning into their life and that there's a life outside of the show. So she decided to, you know, if Picard decided like, hey, the fish died and it's not for me anymore or something, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to question it too much, but I guess this is different. I don't know. Like you're talking about Star Trek fans who like obsess over like fake documentation about how engines and that's true Heisenberg compensators work. They will notice when a hairstyle. Ch- they had to have two episodes with two separate conversations about oh, Jordy's beard. beard. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, the beard. That's right. So this is a big so it's deal. Like everyone's just like <laughs> hyper critical on the appearance of everything. And yeah, they are. Like I will th- say that I I really enjoyed what we don't get a lot of on this show this past actually since the beginning really is like we don't see how other captains manage their ships yeah yeah like we that kind is of, true that's true we kind of live in this world where it's like picard almost seems like the only captain and, and he's always presented end, as if know, he's like the best Starfleet. captain yeah true true but yeah. then you but then all of a sudden sometimes these other people come in and i'm like oh wait there's other fucking captains and there's other yeah. people who are really really good at their jobs and do things differently yeah. and there's i don't know how many of them thousands of them hundreds of them i don't know yeah but yeah, it's absolutely. really interesting when they come in because you can see different ways of doing things and it's i love it i think it adds a really complex layer that i i really yeah. enjoy and I, and I like how they make make him such a like I already mentioned, like he's such a foil to Captain Picard. Like I already mentioned the fact that, you know, he moves very differently. He stands differently, but also mm-hmm. like 
he cares about his children. He puts their photo, their their drawings up on the that. wall yeah, over everything different. else. And he has a different catchphrase. His catchphrase is get it done, not yeah. make it so. You yeah, know, like but, he, a, but he, <laughs> says it, he says it, get her done. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get her done. <laughs> that was coming from a mile away. He's, yeah. he's like from the South. He's, he's like a, a Southern. You know? Yeah, he, yeah, he does have done. that like air. Yeah, he's, an, sure. he's a gung, he's more of a gung ho American yeah. type of guy. And he's like your cowboy Texas guy. Yeah. And he constantly plans for worst case scenario. Picard doesn't. Picard is optimistic. Picard also doesn't approach conversations so like adversarially. He's very diplomatic. I don't think he's adversarial. I think he just knows what he wants and he trusts and believes and he he thinks his team should, should execute what he wants. He's the captain. Yeah, yeah. No, you know? no, like, no, not, 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 in, not with his team. I think when You're he's doing negotiations. About the negotiation, right? Yeah, negotiations. Oh, but that are- was that's because that's how the Kardashians communicate. Like, exactly. That's how they want. So he's built so great he's for the, that. He's the yeah. expert because he's yeah. been studying and that's why he was brought in because he knows them and how that's how they want to be communicated with. He, it's all, you know, because he comes back into the room. He's like, oh, okay, did it work? Like, I got to be yeah, yeah, super yeah. <laughs> aggressive. Like, it's all it's all like a play, right? Yeah, yeah. That Which was is- like my favorite bit of him like yeah, in yeah. the whole show where he finally like lets, uh, pulls back the curtain a bit on what he's doing to his crew. Yeah. And, and he's like he excited. He lets them in on what he's doing, where he's like, okay, I'm playing them, right? I'm going to do this. gets excited. He's like, oh, okay. And the best part of that is that Picard or Riker goes, man, I'll tell you one thing. He's very sure of himself. And then Deanna goes, actually, he's not. And that's really fascinating that well, he, like, he's, he's yeah, not yeah, like- yeah. He's not like Picard. Picard would go in self-assured without putting up a front and try to talk to them calmly and diplomatically. Jellico is putting on a performance. But that's not what works for them. That's why exactly. Picard's not doing I think, it. I think that's why it's really cool. Like they're so different, but also, they're both effective. Also, I, yeah. I want to say, yeah. Deanna, you, you're fucking out of your element, dude. You're fucking wrong about so many things. <laughs> yeah, what, what does that lady say? What does that lady her. say? You're wrong. You're so wrong. You're so, you know, I it mean, kind of reminds that she me. Said that, you're wrong. Yeah. You're absolutely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that she said Ooh, that he wasn't sure, like uh, it at that moment, I was like, "Wait, what does that mean? Are they going to come back to that? Or what are they, What are they going to I reveal?" Just saw about it, the I just saw it as like you know, even though he's making decisions, you know, nobody's ever a hundred percent sure if it's going to work. I mean, you're yeah. just doing what you believe is best in that moment, and and that's what he's doing. But he can't show weakness. In it humanizes moment, him. Right? It like, makes it show like he's not yeah, like exactly, and that's that's yeah. what I think that line was for was to like humanize him and be like you know like hey he's doing what he's doing but like you know he's not sure either. But we're hoping it'll work, and he's but. trusting his team a lot. The team that he just met, he's trusting them a lot to perform a lot of this maneuver with him. Like this kind of reminds I didn't me quite of like pick that sentiment up from that exchange, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of like, I'm sure none of us are politicians. None of us work I in am. the sphere. Of, <laughs> but I'm sure that if you are in the military or a politician and like, say you have to deal with like foreign affairs and stuff like that. This kind of reminds me like when you're dealing with aliens, you're dealing with different creatures and beings that have different communication styles, mm-hmm, much mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. maybe different political leaders around the world or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So like it kind of reminds me, this is a bad example, but like with if you go meet with like certain certain leaders or whatever, it kind of reminds me that. Well, like if you, pres- if you met what with the if you met with like was a that pre- video of what's his name? Um Throwing up on that guy on the oh the we yeah that before uh, the sushi well, yeah, the yeah, that's George Bush senior it's very particular to Japanese culture that yeah. you shouldn't vomit on people <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly or it's like you need an me. expert on Japanese customs <laughs> to please, tell you yeah please do not vomit please do on not your yeah throw up so, on the prime minister exactly I I I, I so uh, <laughs> from time to time that video is amazing <laughs> from time to time I get like an idea of like who would make a perfect captain and this inspired me this episode inspired me to think of i don't know if you guys have seen the show um the thick of it it's with peter capaldi Mm-mm. but if the character of uh malcolm tucker played by peter capaldi was uh, a captain in this universe uh, i would love it so much what yeah. would make him 
describe he's just he's just so blunt so oh, he's blunt, like a blunt and captain he yeah. drops a lot of c-bombs uh <laughs> and uh he just has great like british humor and he's really uh, like like if, like if dr house was a captain and he just says uh, dr murder. house is a fucking pussycat compared to <laughs> <laughs> Tucker, dude. you you well, bring yeah, up like other actors and stuff just reminded me like actually jellico's management style now that i think about it reminds me a little bit of uh Commander Adama from yes. BSG. Oh, okay, yeah. I was yeah, I, I was it. thinking that too, Dan. Yeah, I was actually true. thinking that, and Dude, I, I didn't mention it. And like yeah. when you Adama contextualize it like that, like I fucking Enterprise. love Adama. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't like Jellico kept rubbing me the wrong way, like in the moment, like throughout the episode. But I love Adama. Adama and is it's... like if Jellico had a touch of Picard. No, you know? I, well, I think I think Jellico Jelly is kind of like if if Adama and his uh, second in command, what's his name, uh, Ty. Or oh, the, the, uh, oh, the, the yeah, older Colonel gentleman. Ty. Yeah. Colonel Ty, yeah. If he had a little bit of him, you know. Okay, Olivier. that makes sense too. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, there's a bit of Ty in there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, like very like because because Adama isn't as super militant, but his second in command is. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Jellico is definitely like, I want things by the book. That's the other thing is that Jellico is very much like, just do it by the book, please. Like, don't tell me just that you can't. Get her can. done. Get her just, done. Just do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think I don't even think it's by the book. I mean, who knows if anything that he's saying, like how experimental or trying it might be. We we don't know. We don't have that insight to what that's he true. considers on the book. But I think what he expects is We don't, we don't know what that, the book is. Yeah, yeah, we don't know what the book is. Yeah, he has um, his I think own what like, he, ideas. I think what he expects is that he's the captain and that, yes. that, domain. that is the final say. There is no... like. I feel like Picard is a little bit more collaborative, maybe. Yeah, so Picard, yeah. whenever he has a problem, everyone will come into the conference room with Picard and, go, and he goes, okay, I would like to discuss solutions. Everyone come up with an idea. Jellico wouldn't do that. Jellico would go, okay, I think we need to do this. Let's execute this. And he would yeah. just do it. In uh, fact, when right. when uh, Picard comes up to ask him for like more like it yeah. would be cooler with a group, he's like, "Fucking Riker sucks, dude. How do you put <laughs> up with him?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought you were about to talk right. about the other one where Jellico he does. I, I I does that. There's the uh, oh, changing with the scene where he's where he's like, "You're not going to get your ship back, probably, and you're probably <laughs> well, going to no. die." Yeah, where, where, I love where, that. where they shift custody, and I, I was like, "That's oh, yeah, a cool yeah, scene yeah. because too. they're quietly talking," and he's like. Oh, this intelligence is two years old. I don't know how good this is. And then he immediately steps up and goes, what if I send a probe at yeah. the same time and I sure, get you the sure. information you need? And it's like, he mm -hmm. he wants, because also he sympathizes with him. You can tell he's like, how did you get into Cheyev to talk you into this fucking mission? This is stupid. Yeah. And then you could tell also in later in his broadcast with Necheyev, he was like, well, they found that signal for you, you know, like that you're so worried about. Like he could, like he didn't agree with Necheyev, but he did well, it anyway. Well, I think and it calls back to the the episode title, Chain of Command, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this yeah. is very much Chain of Command type of um, management and handling of a situation. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I love that he's like, oh, he's also blunt in that conversation with Picard. He'll be like, blunt. there's a good mm -hmm. chance you're not coming back, dude. Like this is a okay, that's mission. a little too blunt, but okay. I like that. I like that because no, because because then the, I, I don't know. It, it feels like, like hey, you're gonna die. Well, no, it, well, it, that, that made just, me wonder. Like, okay, well, how does Starfleet like come up with this mission, and how did they weigh the pros and cons of who they were sending, and like, is Starfleet now considering John Luke? Like, it's fine if this dude dies. Yeah, like, is that I, how they consider him now? Are are, it, are they finally yeah. considering him like a liability because he was once a Borg or something, or like what's yeah. what, what's going through their mind? I want to know. Because well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. One, he was once a Borg. There's so many things that they let slide that I think that they're like, <laughs> dude, if this guy dies, we don't have to court martial him, dude. <laughs> it's like I don't know if they are considering it real right now or not, and that's I kind think, of frustrating to so me. So, so I think I think the episode alludes to two. It doesn't say directly, but it alludes to two things that explain why. One is that this threat is like huge like breaking the geneva accord style thing like this is like a weapon yeah, they introduce a, yeah. a type of weapon that has not been uttered before that everyone's all scared of metagenic yeah, a, weapens right? are you talking about the rabbit's foot <laughs> what yeah well it's like a metagenic virus yeah, yeah. that is like so bad that not even the Romulans will do it, you know? They were only banned because those who tried to use them kept destroying themselves. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> it's that's why, so that be, because of the stakes, they're willing to send Picard in, and if Picard dies, it's worth it. Oh, to, yeah, the other thing that, that made it, it must be Picard is because the Cardassians made a very uh, pointed effort to make the mystery something that only he knew about. 
Yes. Yeah. He knows about theta band subspace transmissions because that was what he studied yeah. on the Stargazer. So And and later you find out that it was a ruse to get him to talk to the Kardashians. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They, it's it's also that they can capture him to talk to him. Yeah. They didn't is, want Beverly all along. She they're like, oh, she was no, scared of her. So she's, was it kind of she's like got a so many ruse? Bodies. Her body counts through the roof, but not of like sex, but of killing. Was yes. it a ruse uh, to get Picard there, or was it a ruse to see if the Federation would send this like spy team in and kind of like see how it seems? No, how it, was they they would it, was, it was to get Picard there. It was so the Cardassians want, want Picard, and so going back to our Borg discussion when the Cardassian guy that's engaging with him i don't know his, what's his name but yeah tim, i forget tim, as well um, tim, tim. when tim kardashian is <laughs> yeah. engaging with him um, the lamest he, kardashian. <laughs> he <laughs> refers <laughs> did you guys catch it he refers it's to it's a ghoul madrid he refers to picard with like a barcode number he i does, thought that was yeah. a callback yeah. to when he was a borg and i was like oh is he still like got a little? No, Borg that's in like him? a Starfleet identification. Oh, really? Right? Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't yeah, know it's what like, that it's is. Like a dog it's like a dog tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. fucking know. To me, I was just like, oh my god, he's a computer part. I, I think like, it was his know? social security number, essentially. <laughs> his social security yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. His computer Imagine part. that being <laughs> how like a villain like talks to you. It's like I know your social security number. Yeah, most mostly bag of water. Uh, three three two two four. I thought it was his computer part number. That's I know what your I thought. mother's maiden name. <laughs> yeah, three three nine five, and the name of your first pet. Yeah, <laughs> and then and the model and make of your first car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that would be hilarious. <laughs> uh, we also have your first condom you used. Um, so yeah, so it was all a ruse to get him over there. So and, like, they want Picard for some reason, and which we'll yeah, find dude. out in part they want, two. They I want assume. a sperm, dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it has something to do with Borg. I don't know. I don't know why. No, I get this feeling like we don't know. He's yet. a hot commodity. Everyone yeah, wants dude. him. Like, he is very hot. They want to put yeah. him in the shorts, dude, from like the Raja <laughs> episode. <laughs> Oh yeah, the when you had the little golden sh- panties Hell on. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah with yeah, the yeah. Horcrux. Remember the yeah, Horcrux like, that yeah. got him all horned up? Like even yeah. forgotten flute societies want him. It's yeah. true. Oh man, don't they ever want him? I don't know. I mean, this is very interesting. I I I don't and I don't how do you guys feel about this like SEAL team that they uh, it is kind of funny, dude. They I, suck. Out. I love it's the really shot funny. of them in the shuttle with them in all black. It, I thought, <laughs> like, is this ridiculous. the blue man group? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They you, look you so awkward. Me, they that are. scene from uh, from so Zoolander bad. where he he comes out. He's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So, um. Yeah. So basically, they go into the planet. Just as name. Well, Jez. no, they have a they have a whole training thing. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. a whole thing. <laughs> But that's he gets even, sweaty. Like, and yeah, like, sweaty and like Diana keeps fu- or not, uh, uh, Beverly keeps fucking up. He keeps saying, "Beverly, yeah. your your fucking force force field doesn't even cover the whole hole." What's yeah. the like, point? <laughs> yeah. How must it feel for the crew to be like? By the way, Picard's not captain anymore. Also, he, Beverly, and Worf are doing special exercises in the holodeck. Also, they they're, can't they're talk sweaty. to you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think? They're ha- you, like, think, you, think you, you think? You think they think like, oh, they're, they're, they're fucking dude. They gotta be fucking. They're all sweaty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why when Riker went to visit him, he was like, I, I can, I can talk to you later. I'm gonna it's leave. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, why are you reasons. sweating? Are you okay? Yeah. Or why you're out of breath? Yeah, Captain, yeah. You're, I mean, you're I actually wet. <laughs> this this person this uh this spy team assembly here. I I told Marvin when I was watching, I was like, man, I don't have a lot of confidence. No, in no me neither. Special dude. Team. Beverly, well, though Beverly has a lot of body count on her, dude. Like she <laughs> could fucking kill, dude. Give her a fucking scalpel and fucking tell her that you know that they. Tell her you want to be live. her lover. Yeah. And yeah. I think you're um, overselling her deadliness, Ricardo, because yeah. she needs to be an opportunistic killer who takes <laughs> advantage of people. She's who more trust of a vulture her. than like yeah. a bird of prey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, yeah. That's how doctors can kill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Beverly's inclusion is because Gates McFadden often said, Can I do more action stuff? Like like yeah. in uh, Best of Both Worlds, she's part of the away team to the Borg Cube because she was like, Can I go? I'd like to be part of the action team. God damn well, it looks like they were trying to foreshadow a bit more like activeness for her because uh, she also was training with Worf in the previous episode. That's true. Yeah. So she does have like more oh, fighting yeah, experience dude. now. Yeah. And, and she and Worf broke her arm. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to say this. <laughs> it's a. It's important that I say it out loud. Okay. Buffalo Wild Wings has an all you can eat fucking for twenty bucks. Yeah. And I've been thinking about that go this whole week. Next. 
This mm. whole week. Here's the thing. You know what you bring this up, dude? And it's, it's bullshit, dude. It's the same company that did it to Toys R Us. Toys R Us was making money. Mm-hmm. What they mm-hmm. do is they come in, they buy the company up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they raise a the rent. Yeah, they buy the land the company is on and then right, they, buy right, the yeah. they, pay, they raise they the rent. Some, the, some of the properties, they weren't paying rent before. It was paid for yeah. property. Yeah. And then they started charging them rent. So Yeah. And they, yeah. but these companies are companies that were making money. There weren't, like Red Lobster was making money. Look, they're not in their heyday. Yeah. I mean, they're making uh, money. I mean, obviously they weren't like doing the best. The Red yeah. Lobster was fine. But yeah, but that's why, because they were only doing fine and because they're publicly traded, they were able to have some, another company was able to do a hostile takeover. Yeah. But God forbid to- that we, we mess with fucking GameStop because they fucking <laughs> cry everywhere. Oh, look at what they're doing. Uh, these it's guys so, it's shit, so crazy. It's how, almost like, like the stock market. It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's so telling when they just suddenly like you know stop everything. Actually, we're just stopping. We're not allowing you to trade this one anymore. Just yeah, stop it. Yeah. We're taking well, the ball away. That's a bit more complex. So what happened? Because it's Robin Hood, and what happens? Because this is because of the way Robin Hood works. So Robin Hood lets you make inst- like a normal person without a lot of money in the market yeah. make instant trades. In order to do that, Robin Hood has already put some of their own money into the system. Because so many people were trying to buy GameStop, Robinhood was running out of money in order to be able uh, to make. So that's, that's Robin, why Robinhood. That's Robin Hood's fucking problem. It is Robin Hood's problem. Yes. And that was okay, an issue. Mind. So it was less of a conspiracy than it was more like Robin Hood saying, we're going to go bankrupt. Yeah. You know what I say to that? <laughs> so, <laughs> Suck my dick, dude, and pay my money. Um, yeah. Back to the episode. So this team sucks, dude. They should have sent in. You know who they should have sent in? The dude with Predator Vision. Jordy. Oh, Jordy? One. Two. Data. Because he's fast and he can kill. I was, I was saying, Data feels yeah, like really he would do be. way better here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Three. Even if he hadn't, didn't have... Uh, uh, also, it's a it's a metagenic virus that kills yeah. organic life forms, right? right. Data would be fine. Now, <laughs> yes. Are his insides uh, also Terminator-like? Like, so Terminator-like? <laughs> His, in, his innards are Terminator like, right? No, he's a full he's a full plastic android. So No, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So plastic? he's plastic? Not... He's not plastic. His skin I think canonically his skin is plastic. I think so that's his, what they say. his skin yeah. feels like dildo? Yeah, apparently. Mm. Wow. Yeah. But they make skin like dildos, no? Oh my um, god. Sarah, maybe it's like you're, maybe you're, you're showing your, your uh, <laughs> Maybe it's skin like plastic. Dildos, maybe dude. it's actually like a, a soft, supple plastic. It's possible. You know, like yeah. a soft, yeah. like realistic yeah. feeling. But, but oh, I like boy. Dan's suggestion. They should have sent in like a crack talk. feeling. Like, <laughs> with data, <laughs> with data, the with data, data should have been the leader of the, the, the yeah. infiltration data? team. Jordy? Along with three exocomps. And just go in. Broccoli Rob. Broccoli Rob. No, what Broccoli's do do? too nervous. Dude, Bro- they hook up Broccoli Rob to the fucking the, the machine. <laughs> well, and he's yeah, you in need it, to dude. send in a holodeck with him for him to be <laughs> That's fine. That's fine, dude. He ho- And he's all horned up. He sees, he sees an enemy and he'll fucking sexually harass him. Where's Miles? Miles O'Brien? This. He's yeah. hanging like, uh, I feel like we haven't seen him in a hot he's, minute. He's mentally dealing with fucking uh, Keiko now being uh, an adult again. Yeah. So <laughs> he's, he's off doing something important. You'll really? See. Yeah. yeah. He was oh, also reassigned. DS9, probably, right? You'll see. You'll see. Reassigned. He's too busy shooting a different show, everybody. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he's over there shooting Con Air. He got uh, a big anyway. promotion. Let's just say that. I'm <laughs> just waiting. I'm like, this whole time, I'm like, I feel like I haven't seen Miles in a hot minute. Like, yeah, everybody mm-hmm. misses Miles. And then, you know. Because they've had it. like a couple fill-in transporter people. Well, where yeah. do you think? Mm-hmm. First of all, they got rid of fucking Jason Statham. The best yeah, yeah. transporter. Boom. Yeah. He had to go do crank, dude, and fucking fuck people in the streets. Yeah. And then and then Miles, dude, who are they gonna take from us next, dude? Who? Who? Uh but anyway, Ooh. look, at the end they get caught. Beverly almost gets crushed by rocks. Uh well, you it's find funny. Out- they, like, why did so okay? What was the point of that? I don't know, dude. <laughs> so so danger. So, so mm. like they did the thing where Picard's like, we need a different way to sneak onto the planet. Oh so my let's... God, I hate this scene. <laughs> Picard Picard it's whispering to this Ferengi guy is so cringe to be like, yeah. we need to do this quiet. If you uh, are. Yeah. And I'm cause... like, you are so <laughs> not good at this. Like, yeah. this well, is not a download. Everyone's really bad at this. <laughs> well, it's funny because this scene is really bad at this kind of scene. <laughs> what are these horrible seducing people? No, oh she was God. very effective. It worked uh, very I mean, well. She got the job him, but like she's very like over the top dude well it's funny because picard was like i don't buy it if we were to stow away 
quietly. And then the yeah. Frankie goes, I don't think I can do that. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has not That's a Cardassian planet. I can't take you there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Smuggle you there in my cargo. Smuggling was, is wrong. <laughs> it just was cringy. It was a cringy way yeah. to go about solving this solution. And then also, which Marvin reminded me, she does like, uh, Beverly does like the ear caressing, but I guess yeah. that's like equivalent to like his penis. So yeah. that's oh, yeah, why. Yeah. Remember, remember um, yeah. Uh, what's his face? Do- uh, his, his mom. Oh, uh, her mom Luxon, did it? yeah. Yeah. She was with just, the ear rubbing, yeah, 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 yeah. And he too. started vibrating like he was like at a he was coming. He was coming. Yeah. are like, oh my god, this guy's like he's he's like climaxing right now. It's called like, the, it's the actor in that awkward. Ferengi costume was really giving it his all. Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it to that guy. He was vibrating, and so, I don't know how many people can do that in public like that. Like, so the admirable. reason why this scene exists at all is because this was supposed to be like a minor prequel scene. For Deep Space Nine, that Ferengi was supposed to be a character who's a, a regular on Deep Space Nine. They oh, really? Cu- yeah, they cut it and made it a different character because they were like, "Wait a minute, no one has any idea who this guy is." Uh, yeah, so he's Tim. so instead of removing the scene, they left it. They just changed the name. So even the the writers were like, "Yeah, all we did was change the name, but it was supposed to be so and so from Deep Space Nine." I mean, I guess it could have been that so and so. I think they could have just really done it because it'd be something you'd, in in hindsight you'd be like, oh, yeah, it would have been a hindsight connection. Yeah, cool. like, yeah. yeah, and then that still would have been kind of cool. Yeah, I I think they should have yeah. done it, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, it seems um, like an odd reason to to not do it. Yeah, yeah. So later you find out that the Kardashian just wanted uh um. Because, because Worf and Beverly escape. Basically, they get out of the. They get out of the. It, it was all an ambush. Uh, they escape, mm-hmm. and Picard gets caught up because he's a lame dude. Uh, you know who wouldn't have? Jelly wouldn't have gotten caught, dude. <laughs> he would have said, "Get well, her Picard, done." He's trying. Picard's trying. <laughs> and uh, and then you know who the actor is? He's a great fucking character. British oh, yes. character actor. Fucking David, David Warner. Warner. Mm-hmm. Fucking. This is your identity disc. Yeah, <laughs> that's him. I forgot yep. that was him too. <laughs> and he's also in the in the mouth of madness. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he yeah. was also Rachel Gould in Batman the Animated Series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This uh, we will see more of him in the next episode. Uh, as you probably could have told or or seen just from the little short scene he was in this episode, it's going to be a banger of a performance. He's uh, also he's, in uh, the second Ninja Turtles movie. He's a scientist, and he goes pepperoni oh, heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember he's that. Also, he's I also say that all the time. Um, he's Van Helsing <laughs> in Penny Dreadful, which I love. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, we love David Warner here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All love from this 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 crew to that playing crew. Ghoul Madrid. Yeah, you know Ghoul <laughs> Ghoulia. Yeah, they're, they're all ghouls. ghouls. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the episode ends, and it's like dun 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 to be continued. I Smash give this. Cut. Yeah. I give this a nine. I give it a nine too. Uh, there's a lot to like. There's a lot to like about it. Yeah. The only issue. Is that there's like kind of a lot of filler of them just kind of going through cave systems. That's like, fine. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. I, I, so there's a few reasons for that. So originally, this was supposed to be a single episode, and they were supposed to do the entire arc that they're going from part one and part two into one episode, and they ended up splitting it between two. And I, you may not. Uh, see it now but by the time of the next episode it'll make sense in that they did that for budget reasons making it two episodes was cheaper and it'll be it'll be more apparent in the next episode why it was cheaper Hmm. second interesting because they built this whole tunnel set with sands and all that they had to like make a lot of use of it so they did all sorts of stuff the funny part is it turns out the lots i think the paramount lots where these were built paramount pictures lot uh, there's a lot of stray cats and the stray hmm. cats also could get in and out of the studios and there's sand everywhere. So the cats oh, started using this set box. as a litter box. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> nice. So apparently like, the crew- Why does it smell like cat piss? <laughs> yeah, here? apparently the cat cast piss. and crew just found it really funny. Like there's like, oh, there's cat poo everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, wow. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, but I guess that kind of adds to the ambiance, I guess. There's just like mounds of poo and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> it makes the, it more natural of the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah, th- those rocks that fell on Beverly, that's actually a pile of cat shit that was yeah. just... <laughs> hardened cat piss. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a lot. And cat piss <laughs> is hard to get out of clothing yeah. and, and whatnot, so... It Good is not like really. dog piss. Dog no, piss are like, eh, no, 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 no. whatever. Just, just no, wash cat it. pee, if a cat pees on like a spot somewhere, oh God. If a cat 
Good P luck. gets on Good your shoes, you. you should just throw the shoes away. Just, it's not really salvageable. <laughs> just throw it yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Marvin, yeah. we should tell everybody about our, our cat Bert when he, he so we had a cat Bert who, <laughs> who a cat bird? A cat named Bert. <laughs> oh. And he was a senior citizen and he had like pee issues and he refused to use the litter box. And believe me, everyone, we're me and Marvin are cat people. We did the vet. We did the different things. He just was a guy that liked to go outside of the box, particularly in the corner of Marvin's room. He just peed in the corner onto, of the room. But that was specifically just thing. onto a large pile of cardboard boxes. Yeah, because That's, we tried yeah. to block him. We're like, okay, what if we make it hard for him to access this part of the room? Like, no, no, no. This cat would climb Mount Everest of cardboard boxes and get behind and, and get to pee in his spot. Yeah, and this, he this just he eventually we just were like fuck it he's gonna is, pee we, in this spot forever and that's we, that you we know? even put like, a litter box I think t- once we had two yeah. litter boxes oh there, we had multiple he and just, then he just, he just went around the litter box and did it not in the litter box on purpose yeah. does that mean that for like he pretty much just, the entire time you had him he was peeing outside of Boxes yeah, and- yeah. He just, until we moved. When we until moved, until we moved. Yeah, he then started using the litter box. But again. then we caught him peeing outside. The litter he, box. he was trying to establish yeah. a pattern of not peeing in the litter box again. We're like, no, no, no. And yeah, he's like, oh. and and he, then, he, but he was rough. He had it. Also, yeah. let's we'll mention that this cat was like senior, senior citizen cat. Yeah, Why did you put him out of his misery? Well, no, get, <laughs> no, he wasn't well, he, sick. He, he was just, he was feeling good. He was I mean, fine. We adopted he lived, him as a he senior. lived like two and a half years beyond what the doctor said he would, and yeah. he was mm. he lived yeah. a happy life, you know. Like yeah, uh, and we and he lived out the rest of his life with me and Marvin because we adopted him as a senior citizen. But he was healthy and everything. He just was an old man set in his ways. Yeah, and that was, he yeah, just, that was he wanted yeah. to do what he wanted to do. You should you should have jellied him. <laughs> Well, but we I, loved him nonetheless. We loved him nonetheless. I thought you were going to talk about mm-hmm. the other cat that we rescued, Benicio. Where no, when we, Benicio. When we yes. were trying to take him to the vet to get neutered, he just he hadn't pooed in like three days because he yeah. was eating outside food. Like we had just rescued him, and he was like backed up with like trash. And on the way to you the had, vet, had eaten Burger King. Yeah, essentially. Probably. Uh, Carl's Jr. At least it's that's that's outside of where <laughs> we are. So. You know, uh, we we try to drive to a hospital that was farther because that was the only place accepting neuter appointments quickly. And boy, right as we got there, he just com- all the poo came out in the carrier, like all at once. <laughs> I have and- never seen that much poop from a cat. Like it was like a heaping pot. And like it, and it's like cat a poo, like it a, is great Dane, a great Dane, a great Dane sized amount of like poop. That carrier is unsalvageable. Was- <laughs> we could not yeah. wash it out because it's it's a cat poo. So it's like he finally was just yeah. like, I need to go to the bathroom. And he was like in the carrier and he's like, fuck it. I'm just gonna shit myself right now. And we're like, oh my God, we're driving. Yeah. It was just, crazy. He just had I'm to sure go. It was very relieving. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, it must have felt amazing. Also, knowing <laughs> the way he like cleaned up when he wasn't in such a state, like this is the cleanest cat I ever met. Literally, after using the litter box, he would go over to his water bowl dip his paws and wash them like he actually cared about being cleanly yeah. so i imagine this was a very uncomfortable moment for him to be like just have a bunch of shit he was just embarrassed <laughs> he was like i gotta go pull over the car yeah it uh, was uh it was rough to drive you know and of course i was like throwing up driving like yeah oh we were god. like oh my it god it smells like trash and old burger king and because, you oh, know, no. God knows what the fuck he was eating out there on the street. It yeah, smelled it, it, ungodly disgusting, but it's okay. He's he's good now. He got adopted. That's that's our Marvin and I do cat rescue on the side. <laughs> randomly. I mean, it's more of like a, you know. <laughs> when, the t- when, when the cats present themselves and they find us, we, we rescue them and find them <laughs> homes. Sometimes you're, you're stealing cats. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well we this also, one we we checked for tags. We he checked didn't have for it. tags. And he we was rough. For, I mean, check for chips. He didn't yeah. have any chips. Yeah, um, he clearly funny. was not cared for for like months. Uh, yeah, and, he was you know. in really rough shape. But yeah, so he's know. good now. He's in a really good home now. So yeah, but you took him away from his life. parents. So <laughs> the streets. Parents, parents uh, are did you guys? Did you, did you guys give a rating already? Did I miss it? I oh, a nine. I didn't give a rating. Okay, oh. I'm gonna go with a nine. I'm. G- I agree with you guys. I'm gonna go with a nine as well. Before we got sidetracked and started talking about cats which Marvin and I can talk about forever, <laughs> apparently. But um, I'll go with a nine. I really like this episode. Um, I'm not like completely sold on the drama mm. and the war and everything that's going on. Like, I don't know. Like something about it is like, 
I guess because it's so kind of like maybe what Dan was touching on a little bit, like this response and the way things are unfolding feel so different from past. And so sudden. Yeah. It just seems like such a different response than we're used to seeing at this point. And I'm not sold on it yet. So I really want to see what part two is about. Because I don't really understand the, I don't understand like what's going. I mean, I understand it, but I don't quite buy it yet. But other than that, I really do love. I love Jelly. I love <laughs> um, Picard training on this really shitty SEAL team, special <laughs> ops team. That's the other thing. You don't. You just don't um, imagine Picard being the secret agent type. You know. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. But he's done it before. Like when he went undercover in the and failed the immediately. <laughs> yeah, he did fail. But he did. He like kick a lot of people's asses. That was the last two parter. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he he has never know. been successful on these missions. He <laughs> That's every true. time every time he has to do like a, a reconnaissance or like spy mission, he's he's always gotten caught immediately. <laughs> but I wonder part of me wonders, does the Federation know that the the Cardassians are after Picard specifically, therefore sent him, knowing that this was fake, knowing that they would capture maybe, him. Maybe, maybe we'll find that, out in part two. Maybe we'll find yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, these are all questions I have. So. Well, I think it's I think at least Jellicoe doesn't know. Because yeah. during, so when no. they're doing when they're doing that standoff conversation slash negotiation in the conference room, you know the Cardassians basically tell them, "Yeah, we have Picard." Like they say it outright, and Jellico goes, uh, "That would be really unfortunate." I hope you know, uh, you know, like like yeah. Jellico clearly is upset. It's yeah. like the only time during that confrontation where Jellico seems caught off guard. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. clear he doesn't yeah. know, but it could be some kind of information being withheld from well, him. And as, m- m- the admirals have a history of being dicks. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and, oh yeah, uh, you just okay. So suckers. I'll bring this up now because like there's a part where she like while talking to her at the very end where he says tells Nachaya like. Well, you got what you wanted. The signal's down, um, but we don't know. Like, we haven't heard anything back from them. And then she says, I would very much like to see them again. And I'm yeah. like, what kind of a line is that? That's really I weird think, and I awkward. think they're talking because they say our friends. Yeah. So I think they're trying to talk in a way where even if this encrypted transmission was intercepted, it would be hard to tell what they're talking about. I think that's what they're trying to do. I guess. Where- Okay. But it is odd that she is like, I would like to see my friends again, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was just so, like, strange to me. Strange enough that it made me wonder, like, is this lady on the up and up? <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with this lady. I mean... Because yeah. Admirals have a pretty poor track record. It's, it's, it's easy do. to be distrustful of them. They're so corrupt, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm anxious to see what part two brings, but this episode is is a good one. Yeah. And a lot good. of... I, I love how it's, like, also the, all the characters around are so effective, like... Jordy is f- completely flustered. Data is like cool with it. Data is like, this is cool. I can do all this. Riker is butting heads quite a bit. And it's, I think it's kind of exposing the theory we've kind of had of Riker for a long time, which is that Riker's actually not that great at no. what he does. He's good uh, at fucking though. <laughs> and as a, as a second in command and Jellico kind of sort of exposes a little bit of it. In, well, I think this- he's, he's great in other ways. There, there, yeah. there, are, there are strengths and weaknesses, and his weaknesses are being put on display during this episode. Yeah, he works with Picard. He does not work with Jellico, and, and right, you and know. like there are work, there there are dynamics that work and dynamics that don't. And when you don't have the whole dynamic there, it's nothing's going to work. Yeah, so I, I think it's I, th- I just think it's fascinating how quickly one character can make all these really interesting interactions with all these other characters with the show. Um, I haven't given a score, so I'll just say it, uh, 8.5 for me. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I will say is that the whole need to extract Picard, Beverly, and Worf out and make them their own secret little team, while it is fun, I, I find it kind of to be a bit of a contrivance because there's no discernible reason why this mission in particular holds so much more informational importance than any number of other like Starfleet galaxy threatening, whatever. I totally agree with you, Dan, that they've dealt with in the past. So it's like this level of secrecy was kind of annoying to me because of how non-communicative things were. And there are things that are probably known right now that probably could be communicated right now, but they're not. And maybe, maybe they were like, oh, we have to be, we have to make sure there's no information leaks whatsoever. There are yeah. other situations in which that should have been the case. 
Just saying. There's a lot of things where they should. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, uh, I guess in the sense, it's like, yes, fine. They're finally treating things you as seriously never as they before. should have from the very yeah. beginning. <laughs> and it's really cool to see that for once. But also, yeah. it's not how it's been this whole time. And so it's yeah. like the the recontextualization and trying to find my footing here has been a bit, you know, it, it, it's something to adjust to first before I'm able to enjoy the episode in earnest. Yeah, well, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Just, I think one of the biggest flaws of the episode is something that is not the episode's fault in that it's such a swerve from what we're used to. Yes, uh, that is uh, true. And then like, and but these are all things that honestly should have been given higher priority throughout the series. And it's just now they are, but it's Maybe out of nowhere. Maybe they're preparing us for another series. Hmm. Yeah, it's almost like the next series is going to take certain things more seriously than other shows did. So. Maybe. Yeah. I am excited to see more David Warner though. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah like if he's going to be all over part two, I'm excited. I, I mean, it's, they didn't get an actor of that caliber just to do a small part. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a thing. It's I didn't know it was whole, him. Yeah. So it's chain of command. It's only part one. Oh, we're yeah. going mm-hmm. to get to, we're going to get to part two and you know what? Part two is going to, it's going to have a lot going on. We'll, we'll get into that. We'll get to that. But wait, 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 one last thing. I oh. find it kind of funny that Worf is scared of bats. Yeah. Like, oh, it's and just randomly also, he gets like he's, like, he's spooked he's like, by this, random he's things. Like, this is, uh, I think this it's is, normal. This is bat country. <laughs> yeah. You know. He was going to be At first, Batman. I was like, he, would he know what a bat is? Like, no, he was raised by Russians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what polar bears are. Yeah. <laughs> what if there's a polar bear in there? And he's like, oh, I'm afraid of polar bears. <laughs> oh, my God. No, those would be long extinct. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, like, just give it like a couple of decades. Unless they replicate a polar bear. And then <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have replicated other living organisms before. Yeah. Polar bear is not that complicated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Chain of command, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you like what we did, maybe you could give us a review or rating wherever you are. Apple podcasts, YouTube. Spotify, not Google Podcasts, that's dead. So, Mm -hmm. you know, thanks, Google. Uh, (laughs) If you want, you don't have to. Also, uh, if you're interested, may want to get early access to new episodes and a bunch of other perks, you can head on over to our YouTube channel and become a member of the channel. Join the channel. If you do, like I said, you get early access to new episodes. You get YouTube ad-free versions of those episodes, which is neat. And uh, we now have a members-only Discord where, you know, it's been a bunch of lively conversation about... We're like having philosophical discussions. We're posting recipes, posting our pets. We're d- having spoiler discussions about DS9 that the others aren't oh, yeah, There's listening. a whole channel for that. So oh, it's, if you it's, want, like, for those who want to meet other members who want to talk about things that are upcoming that we haven't hit yet, there's actually a place for that. Oh boy. Oh boy. So you can just head on over to our YouTube channel. There should also be a link in our description that you can just click and that'll take it to a place mm-hmm. where you can sign up. One, one little heads up. If you are on an iPhone, you cannot join our YouTube channel through the iPhone because Apple and Google are fighting. Oh uh, yeah. They're doing and, that. huh? And Apple won't give us the join button on our YouTube because thanks Apple. Uh, so you, you'll have to do that through your web browser if you, if you own an Apple product. Uh, but if you're an Android or any other phone, a Microsoft phone, I don't know, <laughs> you could uh, you can do that. Uh, but also, uh, if you ever want to send us an email, you can always email us at contact at newbiestartrek.com. That's contact at newbiestartrek.com. This week's email is from Bobby. Bobby. Uh, and then they're talking about something I knew about, but I thought it'd be a good way to uh, just let everyone else in the podcast know about this fun little tidbit. Hey there. Hey. I recently discovered the show and really enjoyed the overviews of these episodes that I haven't watched in decades. I have a lot to go back to. So apologies if this has been covered already. I recently discovered that the very last episode of the TV show Webster, season six, episode 25, Web Trek takes place on the Enterprise NCC 1701-D. Truly bizarre. It's a glorified clip episode, but it's also a wharf episode. 
STTNG with the laugh track. Anyway, I figure if you cover a porn parody, you may also want to cover this. Not too hard to find on YouTube, but it's kind of bad quality. Did you know about it? I didn't know until just this year. What do you think are the ramifications of Webster jumping out of his place in the space-time continuum? Did Q place Webster on the Enterprise? Is there a Mirror Universe version of Webster? Is Webster supposed to be playing Robotron on his computer? So many questions. So many dumb questions from me. Anyway, <laughs> thanks and see you next show, Bobby. Would Webster fall under that St. Elsewhere multiverse theory? Yes, he would. He would. Yes. I was thinking right, so Mar- Mark and Mindy too. also falls under that. Mostly, most shows fall under the same universe. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Yeah. Because of a, b- a big connecting character for, the, for that universe is Detective Munch, because Detective Munch shows up in many different shows, ranging from Homicide Life on the Street to Law and Order to Sesame Street. Wow. So uh, a lot is connected just from that. So. All right. So we've established that Webster exists in the Star Trek universe to mm-hmm. start with. Yes. He never he, wasn't part part of it. He, mm-hmm. Though the show Webster probably <laughs> ended because after that episode, the Q probably destroyed him because mm. he was in violation of the space-time continuum. So they couldn't do a show anymore. He was destroyed. So... Also, that episode sucks. It's a terrible way to end the series. <laughs> I can't believe uh, that's the end of the series. Yeah, it just ends that way for some reason. Uh, it, so they make no attempt to explain, like, so Webster's on the bridge of the 1701? He's on his computer, and it accidentally transports him to the Enterprise. And the Worf is the only one on the bridge. Oh, uh, so it's like, he, he like freakazoids himself over there. and Yeah, and that's essentially it. And Worf is just trying to get him back. And in the meantime, it just plays a bunch of clips. That's and it. And was Webster was that sitcom on CBS? Ah, uh, wow! I should I should look that up. Uh, probably the same. Probably the same studio that produced it. Not not the same studio produces shows. No, than really yeah. Shows. So it was. It's mm. a ABC show, actually, not an NBC mm. show. So the I mean, I think people were also more willing to do crossovers in good faith back then. Even though, okay, so I'm looking here. You're right, Ricardo. Uh, they were both Paramount produced. Okay, so that's that, that probably makes sense. why. There's, there's yeah, a connector yeah. there. Yeah, so that I guess gave him the license to do that, but whatever. Mm. <laughs> They're I mean, probably that just that like, is a fascinating like piece of trivia. That like that's weird. <laughs> yeah, and as and as far as I know, uh, that last episode is just Webster and Michael Dorn. Mm. Those are the only two actors in that episode, aside from the clips. <laughs> yeah, aside from the clips. Yeah, but like this, this it's it's like and it the, was clips w- of Webster. I believe, yes, yes, it's, it's clips of, of Webster the sh- just from the show. Yeah. I would have loved if they, like, you know, also tossed in a TNG clip or two. I mean, Worf was- also wanted to tell him about his story. <laughs> you know, I, I also <laughs> ha- had a small boy. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Do you know what a Tapatio hot hand is? <laughs> yes. Uh, thanks, Bobby, for that email and for that piece of trivia. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to admit, I don't think we would cover that episode just because it's a clip show of Webster. Uh, so, I don't, and I, when I watched it, it was really boring. So, <laughs> it's I think I'd want to skim through it to see like how Webster interacts with Worf, but there, if if there isn't a whole lot to go on inside of that, there probably isn't much. Yeah, its primary use these days would be just to show clips of it to be like, did you know Worf was in Webster? <laughs> And that's primarily well, depending it, yeah. on how they frame the clips being presented, you could probably exploit it maybe and just yeah, replace oh, all the yeah. clips. Yeah, just be, uh, and just you can Webster. make a much better show out of the out of the bones of it. Yeah, Webster is like Worf. Have you heard of Four Chan? Let me show you Four Chan, mm-hmm. and it shows all the shit. So yeah, it's like let me show you the season two season finale of the Next Generation. <laughs> let me show. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it just keeps cyclically rotating in clips into a, yeah, yeah. Clip show, <laughs> clip show. <laughs> Riker remembers that time Worf met Webster <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what I want like 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 uh, Diana Moldar uh, Pulaski says we have to show Riker some of his most traumatic memories in the face yeah and then Webster. they have to show you Worf and Webster and yeah. then <laughs> Webster's like, oh, I want to show you one of my favorite guys ever. And it just keeps his looping. name's Commander Riker. <laughs> but he was having a rough time at the time. He was losing his brain. <laughs> uh, all right.
right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to this fucking podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you, guys, you. If you guys ever want to see other stuff we do, head on over to FugitiveFrames.com. We have links to all the stuff we do, including the Would You Stay Tuned podcast. Lots of stuff coming up there. And uh, next week or next time, Chain of Command Part 2. Everyone knows what's coming. Can it, what'd you say? Chain of command? Yeah, chain of command. Chain oh, of command. It sounded weird what you said. Ch- chana, chana command. Yeah, I don't know. You were like slurring your words. But chain, chain of command part two next chain. time. We love you guys. Thank you. We don't. We don't. don't Thank you for I love you. I love you. you Just know that I love you. I get the feeling that we should all practice counting. (laughs) (laughs) That's for later. (laughs) Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, Goodbye. Goodbye.